Hello and welcome to Running the Table, the podcast where we run through everything on the table in the world of sports and the first round of the 2022 NFL Draft has come what just and gone. Happened? What just <laughs> happened? Picks are flying around left and right. Nobody has picked where they were mocked to and it was just absolute chaos. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a quick little review. We're going to go team by team. What the heck they did. We're going to lightning round it real quick. So Tim, are you ready to go? Let's run it. All right. So first, we're going to start with the Jacksonville Jaguars with the first overall pick took Trayvon Walker and with the 27 pick traded back up and took Devin Lloyd. I think this is pretty solid for them. You know, they got two defenders, you know, Trayvon Walker, the number one overall pick Devin Lloyd, a solid linebacker in his own right. They're set up pretty okay defensively now. Yeah, I have two solid defensive picks that'll definitely help them on the defensive end. They could have decided to go offense on one of them, but I think two defense works out for them. I see those being two solid picks. After that, the Detroit Lions with the second overall pick took Aiden Hutchinson and took Jamison Williams with the 12th overall pick traded back up with Minnesota. Yeah, Aiden Hutchinson seemed like the obvious pick, but what a trade trading up for Jamison Williams and getting another weapon for Jared Goff to throw to alongside Amon Ross St. Brown. Yeah, I mean, overall, I think the outlook for the the Lions in the future is looking pretty good with some of the talent they've got on both sides of the ball, especially adding yeah, James. Not Williams win the division good, but be good in like next year kind of good. That's what I'm saying. It's like looking at, at whoever becomes their quarterback of the future. Yep. Um, they've got now, some players there now. All they need is a QB. After that, the Houston Texans at number three took Derek Stingley, the first surprise of the draft, and at 15 took Kenyon Green. Stingley, I think if he can recover his 2019 form where on that national championship team, he was the best corner in the nation. I think they'll be, you know, they'll have a superstar. Kenyon Green kind of makes me scratch my head. Yeah, he's a really good interior guard, but like protect Davis Mills at 15. All right, sure. Yeah, I mean, I, I definitely like Stingley at three. Um, I think he's going to provide very solid uh, defensive performance for them. Green, I don't know, bit of a stretch. I feel like he could have been taken later if they wanted to trade back or they could have gotten more value at that position. But who knows? Maybe it'll work out well for them. Yeah. And after that, the New York Jets, definitely one of the winners of tonight with the fourth overall wow. pick. To they made some moves. Ahmad Gardner at 10, Garrett Wilson, and at 26, Jermaine Johnson Jr., Sauce Gardner, a corner on the outside who's locked down. They took Garrett Wilson, who is arguably the best receiver in this draft class. And then since Jalen Johnson kept falling, 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 the Jets traded back up and got him a round of applause for the Jets in this draft. Yeah, I mean, definitely improved on both sides of the ball. Wilson adds some great depth to that wide receiver room. Um, on defense, you got guys at cornerback, obviously Sauce Gardner, we both are uh, pretty high on. Um, and Jermaine Johnson love is second. I mean, all in all, at the 26th pick, definitely some pretty good value for them to trade up and go get. They've got some players. The Giants at five and seven took Kayvon Thibodeau and Evan Neal. It's pretty simple. They had a good draft. Two of the best players, two of the best at their position. An edge rusher in Thibodeau and Neal. Now you got an offensive tackle to protect Daniel Jones and Saquon Barkley. Pretty good. Yeah, I mean, definitely solid. They they, they went with the uh, offensive line, defensive line route. Uh, Thibodeau, definitely not a bad pick at five. I think he has the ability to, to become a very solid guy for them. Um, and Neil, offensive line has been a, a big problem for them, and uh, hopefully that'll help out both Saquon uh, and Daniel Jones there. Carolina at six threw us all a curveball instead of taking Malik Willis, took E.K. Ekwonu. We were all convinced. Yeah, we were all convinced they'd take Malik Willis. No nope. protection for Sam Darnold, so we'll see what the Panthers are going to do this season. Yeah, regardless whether Sam Darnold becomes that uh, true permanent option, uh, they added some guy to they added a, a guy to protect whoever is back there. Um, definitely not a bad pick. I think he's going to be a pretty oh, solid no, offensive lineman, but definitely a surprise for all of us uh, expecting QB. With the Atlanta Falcons, the eighth overall pick, they selected Drake London, the first wide receiver off the board, and they're essentially building a basketball team where you have size in Kyle Pitts and you have more size in Drake London. I think it'll be definitely an interesting pairing with Marcus Mariota throwing them the ball, but Drake London, if he can continue to develop and be that superstar wide receiver they're drafting him to be, it's a great pick. Yeah, I mean, this could could work out really well for him. Obviously, he's got great talents, so whether or not he's going to live up to it at the next level. Um Overall, they definitely needed help with wide receiver. That was a massive need for them, so certainly not a bad pick. Um, but choosing London over, for instance, like a Garrett Wilson is an interesting one, but we'll see if it works out for him. Yeah, who knows? With the ninth overall pick, the Seattle Seahawks took Charles Cross. Again, punting on the opportunity to draft Malik Willis. That is a common theme of the first round tonight. Malik Willis is still on the board going into the second round. But hey, offensive line has been a weakness for the Seahawks for years, and now if Charles Cross can develop into that elite offensive tackle, you know, develop a new stalwart offensive line in Seattle. 
Yeah, I mean, Charles Cross, I think he has the ability to be a, a real solid guy for them up front. Um, obviously, like you said, offensive line has been a need for them for years. Um, I think at that position, definitely not a bad pick to take. We'll see who, we put the, who the Seahawks end up putting around them in that their rebuild of theirs. The New Orleans Saints with 11 and 19 again pass up on a quarterback. With 11, they traded up for Chris Olave, a definite wide receiver to pair alongside Michael Thomas. And at 19, took Trevor Penning, an offensive tackle, to protect Jameis Winston's blind side. Olave, definitely a crafty wide receiver. He's going to make an impact right away. And Trevor Penning, if he can stop being so darn penalized, he'll be good for the Saints. Yeah, I mean, I like both of these picks. I think Olave is a great guy to add to that receiving core and Penning. I mean, they definitely would like some more help on that offensive line. Like you said, penalties, a bit of an issue, but uh, if they're able to work on that for them, I think he can be a pretty good option for them to bulk up that offensive line. Now, the Philadelphia Eagles, what a day they had at 13, oh taking Jordan Davis, a definite Definite stalwart on the defensive line to pair alongside Fletcher Cox, and they acquired A.J. Brown via trade, trading the 18th pick to Tennessee, and then just boom. Where did that come from? And then inking him to a four-year, $100 million extension. You know, we kind of, this is a lightning round, so we're going through it quickly, but we have to mention it because, wow, what a day for Philadelphia. Yeah, Fly Eagles fly today. Obviously, the, that the interior defensive line with uh, Fletcher Cox and Jordan Davis, who those are some those are two big guys. Um, and then obviously uh, getting dogs. rid of the other first round pick to bring in AJ Brown, massive for your offense there. So um, they're going to look real interesting coming into next year. They're going to look different, uh, but they've got uh -huh. some, they got some weapons now. Yeah. And the Baltimore Ravens 14 like Kyle Hamilton who fell to them and then traded away Hollywood Brown and ended up with a 25th overall pick and selected Tyler Linderbaum. Lamar, which Lamar, was, not happy. Lamar was not happy on Twitter. WTF. I mean, I agree. Your only semblance of wide receiver help gone, but Hey, you got two of the best at their position, Kyle Hamilton, and Tyler in the bomb. Yeah. I mean, in terms of wide receivers, Ravens now have Rashad Bateman and pretty much nobody, obviously you got Mark Andrews at tight end, um, but taking Kyle Hamilton, I think is going to do great things for that defense. That is pretty great. And uh, getting Linderbaum at 25. Sure. You probably have some good improvement at your center position, but wow, that offense is going to look different. The Washington Commanders trade down and, and take Jahan Dotson at number 16, which getting some weapons to throw to for Carson Wentz and getting a sidekick for Terry McLaurin. Tim, you're kind of skeptical. I was scratching my head at a little bit. I mean, with all the guys on the board, I, I wasn't necessarily sure yeah. if I was sold on Dotson, um, especially at 16. I think they could have taken him anywhere in that first round if they really wanted to take him in the first round. Um, but off he goes at 16. We'll see if he works out for him. Yeah, he was... As the fifth wide receiver off the board, you know, we definitely had him ranked a little bit lower than that. But, hey, if Washington feels inclined to develop him, yeah. And he can also yeah. be used in the return game. So we'll see how that works. And at 17, the L.A. Chargers take Zion Johnson. This one's pretty cut and dry. Protect Justin Herbert. Good pick. Yeah, very solid pick. I mean, they've now used uh, last couple of drafts. Um, or was it last year that, that Slater was was taken? Yep, um, last year. Yeah, so last two drafts take offensive line really helps boost. They built a uh, nice. They'll be. They built a nice offensive line. Slater, Balaga, Johnson. Zion Johnson. Yes. <laughs> hey, I mean, I think this will be very solid. It's been a long day, and of course, Corey Lindsley at the center. So. Yeah. Justin Herbert is very well protected. Tennessee with eighteen trading away AJ Brown and selecting a it's younger. Him. A.J. Brown. In Unproven A.J. Brown, I guess. Traylon Burks. I mean, I get it. A.J. Brown wanted a new deal. They weren't going to get it done, so you might as well just go get the same version of him where you control him, but ah. When you come off, when you come off of your fan sad. holding on, when you when you come off of a year holding on to the number one seed with two of your main guys, many of your offensive weapons injured for the majority of the year, for you to go and break that up for because you didn't want to pay a guy to get an unproven young version. Yeah, uh, right. I don't know if that really helps your win now boost your, what you had team. I don't know. We'll see how it works out. At 20, Pittsburgh gets a new quarterback. The Steelers draft Kenny Pickett, the hometown kid. The one pick that I got correct, basically. Woohoo! Let's go Kenny Pickett. It's yeah, I mean, I it, new QB, the hometown that's all boy got. back. How are you doing? Keep it moving. Kansas yeah. City, 21, take Trent McDuffie, and 30, George Karlaftis. For as much crap as the Packers are getting for not drafting a receiver, my God, Kansas City better be getting as much crap because they took two players on the defense as well. And now their wide receiver room is a lot worse off than it was last year. I'm just going to say that. Yeah, I mean, you're, you're very right that their wide receiver room is – a little bit hurting, uh, but I really like these two defensive picks for the Kansas City Chiefs. Obviously, their offense was their, was the majority of their strong point, especially as the season went on. Their defense did pretty well, though. But these two guys, I think, could really help them out a lot. Um, I, I love Karloftis landing uh, in Kansas City as a Purdue, Purdue fan. Guy. 
Um, we'll, we'll see how it works out, but uh, Kansas City's offense is still definitely going to be interesting. We'll see whether or not they mm-hmm. try to do anything in the second round to, to boost that at all. All right, Green Bay, let's go. They take Quay Walker and Devontae Wyatt. No wide receivers. Isn't that just the most Packers thing ever? But the glass is half full here. I'm going to say that this is a good thing. Now with Walker and Wyatt, I think that they have one of the best defenses in the NFL. And Tim, I know what you're going to say. It's Aaron freaking Rodgers. He's going to find a way to figure it out. Look, there's still he's going to find a way two. to he's going to find more ways to be even more pissed off. At the franchise. Look, we have a pair of day two picks in, in round two and we have a round three pick. We're going to find a way to draft. At See least how many receivers wide receiver. are off the board by that point. Who I, knows? I but promise. I promise. Two you very interesting happen. picks. The, the thing that's the weirdest thing to me is the fact that Green Bay loves Georgia defensive players. But and Georgia I mean, defensive I can't blame players them. have proven to be very good for us. So Georgia, Georgia has had very good defensive players and defenses over the past couple of years. So it makes sense. But still, very interesting picks. I mean, the glass is half full for me. I don't mind it nearly as much. Buffalo takes Kyir Elam at 23. Definitely a corner to pair with Trey White. Improve that defense a little bit more. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I like going for the cornerback, I think that'll help him out. It definitely doesn't hurt to add more depth when you have so many cornerbacks and whatnot. We'll see how he works out for him. I think that could be a pretty decent pick at 23. For sure. The Dallas Cowboys at 24 take Tyler Smith, a tackle out of Tulsa. Um, protect Dak Prescott. There's not really much more that Lael Collins left, so you bring in his replacement. I think it's an okay yeah. pick. They need to keep rebuilding offensive line. They tried to go for that here. Um Hopefully it works out for him. I mean, he's definitely a little bit unproven coming out of Tulsa and whatnot, but we'll see. I think he can, he definitely can prove dividends for him. The New England Patriots at 29 trade down to select Cole Talk Strange. about a strange <laughs> pick. <laughs> Tim, you're so funny. But in all reality, what the heck are you doing, New England? Stop letting Belichick make I have make no picks. idea. I have no coach. idea how this happened. Oh my goodness. New England, you, you got to fix your crap. At 31, Cincinnati takes safety corner hybrid Daxton Hill. I actually like this, you know, because Daxton Hill, he can he can go play nickel, corner, safety. He can do anything, and he's a versatile guy that'll help the Bengals' defense out. Yeah, I mean, obviously improving that Bengals' defense is great, and I'm pretty sure they'll probably use him at that nickel corner because um, I'm not sure if they really need the help at safety. Um, but overall, I mean, I think he'll be able to work out there, especially in terms of injuries. They could put him in a couple different places if, the, if they, they so need it to, but a very versatile pick for them at 31. The Minnesota Vikings round out the first round with Lewis Seen, the safety from Georgia. Um, okay, you needed help at corner, so you kind of get kind of get a defensive back. I mean, it helps. We'll see what they do with him. That's all I got to say about that. See how they develop him. I'm willing to like pump the brakes and okay, just see what happens. Yeah, in terms of talent, I mean, I think he's a, a pretty decently talented guy. Um, in terms of how Minnesota will use him, not exactly sure. That remains to be seen. Um, yeah, it remains to be seen. <laughs> Man, I am if, killing it today. If I could reach through that and smack even, you through that the wasn't nether. even purposeful, but I think that's a great way. Because you you've been on round. fire with these puns, especially in the later picks, and I just want to smack you for it. But you know, I hey, kind of deserve it. That was our lightning round, summing up the first round. How did your team do, or t- did your team even have a first round pick? Because teams like the Dolphins, the Bears, the Colts, the Rams, they didn't have one. But if your team did have a first round pick, we just summed it up for you. And there's still a lot of NFL draft left to be seen with day two and three coming up. So that's all we got for this episode of Running the Table. Like and subscribe if you want to see more of our stuff. And we out. Peace.